In this video, we dive into some of the most chilling true crime cases that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. We start with the shocking story of a mother who committed the ultimate betrayal, taking her own son's life and attempting to pin the blame on her ex. You'll hear the haunting 911 call that set the investigation in motion, followed by details of other crimes that shocked communities to their core. This mother took her son's life and soon after took her own. No, I was emergency. Um, yes, somebody just said my baby. Please get here. They just did what? Said my baby. Do they know who it was, man? Yes, it's my ex, it's my boyfriend, my prom boyfriend. What's your address? Um, you know what? Because they didn't land with that thing? You, you know what? You, I did it. I'm lying. I'm what lying. Did? I'm lying. I'm lying. I did it. Does it need an ambulance, ma'am? Um, no. I mean, no. He don't need, no. What's your name? Siobhan Thomas. Siobhan Thomas. Siobhan. Siobhan. What's your phone number, Siobhan? You know what? You know what? Siobhan. You know what? Siobhan. Yes. Oh, you said your baby was stabbed. Is this your son? Yes. How old is he? Yes. Savon. Yes. How old is he? Yes. Savon. Yes. How old is your son? My son is two. He is two. I see. He was the one that was stabbed. Yes. He was stabbed for what? A knife. Is he bleeding? Where is he bleeding? Is he bleeding from anywhere? No. I mean, he is, but not, not much. Not. From where? Not much. Uh, where is he bleeding from? Not much. Where's your boyfriend at? Um, I think I knew it. I knew it. Uh, where is he at? My boyfriend is going to come in the back door. He's going to come in the back door. So who did it to you? Your boyfriend's standing? Yep. I knew it. Who else was in the house? No. Nope. Who else was in the house? Nobody. Nobody at all. Nobody. Nobody and at all. And the boyfriend is outside? Yep. 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 Oh, we're gonna send the officers out there, okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, we'll send somebody out there. Yep. You better wait. Wait. You know what? I don't even want to play this. I, I did it. Okay. I did it. I did it. I did it. Not, stay, stay on the phone, okay? I keep trying to make it. I'm about to. No, I need to find some money. I got to. I'm trying to. I got to try to find some money. I got to. I got to. I got to. I don't care. I to try to find it. I'm gonna have to try to find it. I'm gonna try to find the money. Can I speak to him? 
They swear. They just swear. Swear. Do you take medicine? Swear. I used to. What kind did you take? Um, Prozac. Prozac. No. Oh, okay. Um, you don't take it anymore? Nope. Okay. What's um, your name? Wait, 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 wait. I do. You still take I it? I do. I still take it. Did you take it today? I still take it. Um, I, I still take it. No. I didn't. No. No. I didn't take it today, but I should have. Okay. I have. Where are you? I have took it today. She didn't take her Prozac today, she's in. Siobhan Thomas, a 33-year-old mother from Camden, New Jersey, was known to her neighbors as someone who had been struggling with her mental health for some time. On the night of August 21, 2012, her mental state deteriorated to the point where it resulted in an act that shocked not only her community, but the entire nation. That evening, Siobhan placed a disturbing call to 911, claiming that her boyfriend had stabbed her two-year-old son, Zari Thomas. A few seconds after she admitted she was the one who did it. She initially seemed confused during the call, switching between calmness and panic, as she told the dispatcher about the incident. This confusion reflected her fragile mental state, worsened by drug use. Siobhan had previously lost custody of her son due to these issues, but had regained it after completing a treatment program. When authorities arrived at her residence, they were met with a horrifying scene. Zari's body parts were found in the freezer. In her state of distress, Siobhan took her own life with the same knife she used to harm her son. The events leading up to that night had been building for some time. Siobhan had a history of drug use, particularly PCP, a powerful hallucinogenic substance. In the days prior to the incident, it was believed that she had relapsed, which may have contributed to the breakdown that ultimately led to her actions. The system had attempted to intervene in Siobhan's life through child protective services and mental health programs. However, she slipped through the cracks after her initial rehabilitation and gained custody of Zari again. This case exposed several failures in the system meant to protect individuals and children at risk. A young couple's murder in their home shatters the peace of a quiet Ohio town, unleashing a twisted mystery of violence and potential unfinished justice. Hello? Toledo 911. Ma'am, mm -hmm. my heart is beating out of my chest. I just got a call from one of my son's friends. Okay. Her phone number, I have it right here. She just picked my husband up to my son and his girlfriend live out at Lawn Acre Lane. Mm-hmm. I believe that's Colin. This girl says she was on the phone with my son and his girlfriend, and he was supposed to go pick her up. He was telling her he was going out the door, and all she heard was the phone drop and heard my son saying in the background, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? And she said she just drove by the house, and the house looked ransacked. All the lights are on. My son's not answering, and neither is the girlfriend. Okay, you said it was... Yes, Lane. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, I got heart problems and my heart's beating out of my chest right now. All right, I understand. Do you know if, if that's all one word or is it two separate? It's No, it's separate words. Lawn Acre. Yes, Long, O-O-N-G, Acre, A-C-R-E, Lane. Oh, my God. Is she still there? No, she just came by here to pick up my husband, my son's dad, and I'm here with the other two younger kids. All right, what is your name? My name is Maite Vasquez Clark. Oh my God. I have the girl's phone number that he was talking to that heard all this going on in the background. Okay. She my said, son's girl, okay. my girlfriend's, uh, my son's girlfriend's parents are out of town. They left for uh, Puerto Rico two days ago. I don't know how to calm myself down. My heart's beating okay. out of my chest. Okay. What did, what did your son tell her? 
my son was like, hey, Tiff, we're on our way out the door. We're coming to get you. And then all she hears is the phone drop and my son Johnny saying, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? Who are you? And no more, no more answers. That's all she hears. And then she says that she starts getting worried because neither of them are answering the phone. And she goes out there by the house and she sees all the lights are on and the cabinets look ransacked. Okay, but you don't have any idea where your son's at? He was there at the house with his girlfriend. That's where they're house-sitting for her parents. Okay, but, but she doesn't... He wasn't there when she went over no, there? No, no. She rang the doorbell and nobody came to the door, nothing. Oh, my God, ma'am. I'm so afraid something happened bad. Oh, my God. Okay, oh. what's your son's name? John S. Clark. Clark is with the E at the end. Is he white, and white, or Hispanic? He's white and uh, Hispanic. He looks more white than anything. How old is he? He's 21. Date of birth is... And the girlfriend is... Okay, is somebody going to meet us over there? Uh, yeah, my husband's on his way there right now. Oh, my God, my hands are ice cold. My heart's beating out of my chest. I do I need to send you medical, ma'am? Please do. Let me get this call in real quick, and I'll send you medical, okay? Look, I have these kids, okay? Please make the call. Her, the girlfriend's name is Lisa Strauss. Okay, what's your husband's name? John P. Clark. What kind of car is he driving? I don't know what the girl's car is that picked him up. I'll give you the girl's phone number. The girl, okay. Tiffany. Do you know how long it's going to take him to get over there? Probably 10 minutes. Oh, my heart. My God, I can't take this. What's, what's his girlfriend's name? Lisa Straub. S-T-R-A-U-B. What's her cell number? Um, this is his girlfriend. This is not the girl that called me from the cell number. The girl that called me is Tiffany. I don't know her last name, and her cell number is... Okay, but we can get a hold of Lisa on that number? No, Lisa's with Johnny. That's what I'm telling you. Lisa and Johnny are boyfriend and girlfriend. They were leaving her mom's house. They were on the phone with this girl named Tiffany, the number I'm going to give you, the cell phone number that I'm going to give you. They were talking to her on the phone when all this promotion went down. I thought the, I thought the girlfriend called you saying that she was on no. the phone. No, no, not the girlfriend, her friend. The girlfriend's friend called me, and she's the one that just came here now to pick my husband. Oh, my God, please. I'm praying that my son is okay. Oh, Lord. All right, stay on the line and talk to medical while they're on their way there, okay? Okay. Hang on. Hi, Listen, ma'am, I am a concerned mother. My son was in Long Acre Lane with his girlfriend, house sitting. Lisa Straub lives there because her parents went to Puerto Rico two days ago. I get a phone call about a half an hour ago from his friend, Sharita, that some girl named Tiffany called her saying that Johnny and Lisa were supposed to pick her up at 11 o'clock. And she was on the phone with Johnny, my son, when he was walking out of his house, his girlfriend's house with his girlfriend to come get her. And supposedly she heard a guy in the background screaming at my son and my son saying, what do you want? Who are you? Get away from us and what have you. Okay, four cop cars were already out at this residence. They're not there and her car is in the driveway. I want to know where my son's at. I want to know where my son and his girlfriend are at. I want to know if they got abducted by whoever tried to assault them and rob them. And it's pretty funny that this girl named Tiffany, which is there right now by the residence, waits two hours to call somebody and report this. Okay. Well, like I said, we were out there. There was nothing going on there. Okay. Where is my son and his girlfriend and her car's in the driveway? Uh, how would I know that, ma'am? I need to report my son missing. Okay. Um, where are you at? I'm coming up to the residence right now. Well, which which residence? Uh, Lisa's house. Okay. I need an address. Long Acre okay. Lane. And what's your name? My name is Maite Vasquez Clark. This is the street, I think, Mama. Long Acre, this is it. Okay. Okay. I'm with my phone? cousin right now that's in the military. Okay. What's your phone number? My phone number is... I want this girl's plate number before we go anywhere so I can give it to the sheriff on the phone. And they're back pulling in the driveway. I want this plate number. Ma'am, I'm going to give you this plate number, okay? Mm -hmm. That this girl's car is driving. I'm going to stay calm. 
I am. Will you stay on the phone with me, ma'am, while I talk to this girl? No, touch me. Who are you going to talk to? Ask, okay, listen, here's the plate number. That is the girl's, uh, the plate number of the car that this girl is driving that my son was supposed to supposedly pick up. Now, these two people right here, that's Johnny's phone. Oh, I don't know. It's my parents probably. Call them back. Okay, is it, what kind of vehicle is it? What kind of vehicle is that you're driving? On the phone? Okay, come here. Ma'am, I'm going to let you talk to her because I have her blocked in uh, Lisa's house driveway. Okay? Okay. Here. You tell them what you do. I will. Hello? Don't okay, what's me. what's going on? Okay, Um, my friend Johnny and Lisa, they were supposed to come pick me up, me and uh, my friend from our house, and this was like 11 o'clock, and um, he, um, I was on the phone with his girlfriend Lisa, and then he hung up and um we all hung up he said they were on their way and then he i called johnny right back because i was going to tell him that um i was going to run to the store and then i was i would meet them at the house well um he was yelling at somebody like um i'm on he goes he goes bro who, who are you and then um I, I called he called him right back and he didn't answer so I text my friend Lisa's phone and I was like, um, where are you? Are you guys okay? And they have not answered to me or nothing. They have not answered the phone and I've been calling and calling and calling. So I drove out to their house after um, my friend's mom got home and um, nobody answered the door. So I drove back by our house to see if maybe they went to his mom's house and um, he wasn't there so his dad called my phone and I was like do you want to ride out there and he said yeah and I brought him out here and now his mom's arguing with me saying I set him up and you know they're my friends and I'm worried about them and I don't have you know I'm worried about my friends because they were supposed to come pick me up and they never showed up okay does anyone have what's what's the son's name what's her son's name is Johnny is that his name yeah Johnny Clark does anyone have have his phone number yeah I do but his phone shut off okay um, she and we was calling and it was ringing and then it was shut off all of a sudden. And then I was calling my friend's phone and I've been texting her, asking her if she's okay, are they okay? Because he wasn't answering. And then I texted her like, last I talked to you, I heard him arguing. And then now all of a sudden they haven't picked up the phone or nothing. Is there a couple officers where you? Yeah, there's some officers out here. Okay, why don't you go talk to them and they can help you okay okay i'll put his mother back on the phone okay actually i don't need to talk to her she okay. just talk to the officers okay all right all right bye-bye you need to get the police out to long acre lane my son is in the basement tied up of this house i just saw him through the window i the police were out here earlier and did absolutely nothing him and his girlfriend are tied up in the basement okay all right we'll get them out there get them Ma'am, you need to calm down. We'll get them out there. But yelling at me is unconscious. They're unconscious, ma'am. Oh, okay, you said they're unconscious? Yes. Okay, all right. With cell phones on their body. Okay, all right. We'll get them out there, ma'am. Oh, my God. Okay. I need you oh to calm God. down. We'll get them out there, okay? Oh, my God. Please hurry. All right, we will. Long Acre. Long Acre Lane. I have the address. We'll get them out there. Goodbye. Lucas County, 911. Oh my God, uh, we just called the police here. I'm but, Long Acre. Uh, yes, but we need a rescue crummy. He's got a bag over his head. Okay. Oh, we're going to see through the window, please. He's got them on their way already, okay? okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. Stay on the line. I'm going to transfer him to you. Okay? Okay. On January 30th, 2011, the bodies of Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub were discovered in a horrifying scene inside their Holland, Ohio residence. The young couple had been bound with duct tape, plastic bags secured over their heads in a heinous act of asphyxiation. Concerned parents had raised the alarm when their son Clark failed to respond. After police lacked probable cause to enter the home initially, the grisly discovery was made by Clark's parents themselves after breaking in. The crime scene investigation painted a chilling picture. The attackers had forced entry through the garage before ransacking the master bedroom, likely seeking rumored cash from a household safe 
a robbery gone awry. But critical DNA evidence remained. A discarded cigarette butt recovered from the scene contained genetic traces linking Samuel Sam Todd Williams and Cameo Petaway to the vicious killings. Legal proceedings moved swiftly for Williams, charged with aggravated murder and kidnapping. Witness testimony and evidence on the trail led to his conviction on multiple life sentences without parole. However, for Petaway, also implicated by that damning DNA, the case took a controversial turn. Despite initial charges, prosecutors were forced to drop them citing insufficient evidence, a scenario invoking double jeopardy protections preventing a future retrial. While one killer faced justice, Petaway's ultimate involvement in the young couple's murders remains opaque, a unsettling loose end demonstrating how violence can fray the criminal justice system's ability to provide full closure and accountability. The Clark and Straub case endures as a tragic reminder that even the seeming sanctuary of a small town can be shattered by brutality, and that true justice doesn't always get the final word when the blood has been spilled. This 27-year-old man is charged with the first-degree murder of his father and uncle. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Um, I'm sorry, what was the address again, Toddy? Okay, the address is... And there's been, um, two shootings. Okay, like, you just heard somebody discharge a weapon, or has somebody been shot? No, um, there are two people dead in the house. Would you like me to, um... Hold on. Okay, hold on. So there's two people deceased in this house? Yes. Okay, and do you live there? Um, yes. Okay, do you, who are these people? Uh, one of them was my father and the other one was my, um, uncle. Okay, and does it look like they have been shot or...? Um, they were shot. Oh, they've been shot? Okay, what's your name? Okay, what's the phone number that you're calling from? Um, I, it's, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with that. You know, it's a, uh, I haven't really memorized it yet. Okay, are you inside the house with them? Um, yes. Okay, so... And my grandparents just, as well. They're, uh, they're... So did you just come home and find them deceased in the house? Um, I would rather, I'm not sure, I'm very new to this, I'm not really sure how this, um, process works, but I would rather, um, I'm not sure if this is a mad, matter of, you know, a Fifth Amendment kind of thing, but I'd rather do that. I need this information, okay? okay? Did you just come home and find them deceased? Um, no. Okay, were you there when this happened? Yes. Okay, who shot who? Um... I shot them both. Okay, so you're the one that you shot both of them. Where is the gun? The gun is on the bed uh, beside me, but I could la leave it there. No, just leave. No, just leave the leave the gun on the bed, okay? Okay. Okay. What kind of gun is it? It is a 762 uh, or no, a 308 uh, Galil. Okay, so it's a seven or 308. Yes, 308 semi-automatic uh, Galil, and uh, also a 10 millimeter, but that's on the counter. Where's your grandparents at? Um, I kept them in the bathroom, or I escorted them into the bathroom. I used a chair and take to just to keep them there while I, while I got my head sorted out. Okay, so you have put your grandparents in the bathroom. Yes, I had no intention of hurting either of them. I never did. What? I'm sorry. I had no intention of hurting either of them. I never okay. did. This was between me and my, my dad and his brother. Okay, and why did, did y'all get in an argument, or...? Um, we've been... This has been a long back and forth. It's been a long back and forth since I got, got here. It's kind of a long story. I would rather kind of turn myself in and explain it down okay. to the station if that's possible. Okay, and where are you at in the house? Um, I'm in my... Father's name. Okay, is that where your father and uncle are at? Um, no. I I panicked. I got nervous. So I clean. I tried to clean up as best as I could. So um, I also there's a force post mortem cut on his neck to make sure he's dead because he's a large man. He made me nervous. Okay, how long ago did you shoot him? 
Um, probably close to maybe a couple hours, maybe, if I had to guess. But you said, and where is it? So you said that there was a 308, and you said there was a pistol also? Um, yes. Okay, where's the pistol at? Uh, on the counter. In the living room, or in the kitchen? No, it's in the, it's in the same room as the rifle. Okay, but right now, you're in, is there any way you can go to the kitchen? Um, I'm sorry, what? You said you're in the back bedroom? Um, yes, I'm in my father's room right now. Okay, where, um, where is the bedroom in relation to where your father and them are at? Um, he's in the garage with a sheet over him. His brother is in his, his room. Okay, and he is in the garage? Yes. And you put a sheet over him? Yes. And your uncle is where? He's in his room. He's in the, in the bedroom? Yes. And are your grandparents okay? Yeah, they're fine. I, I didn't hear them at all. Have you checked on them lately? Um, yeah, I, I saw them a short time ago. Okay, and did y'all get into an argument or something? No, it's like I said, um, this is some better to be explained. It's a very long feud be between me and him. There's a, a lot of death threats back and forth between each other over the years, frankly, and, you know, this, this kind of blew up tonight. Is there any way that you can go outside the um, outside the house? Um, yes. Would you okay. like me to wear something brightly lit or something no. to... No, what do, you, what do you... Okay, do not have anything in your hands. I want you to stay on the phone with me. Do not have anything in your hands, and when you go out... Go out the front door. I understand. Would you like me to wait in the driveway then? Well, I need you to make sure though your hands are up. If you can put your put the phone like on your shoulder, but make sure the officer can see your hands, please. I understand. Okay, just are you going that way now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, you told me you'd like me to stay on the phone with you. All right, uh, Bobby, I'm gonna go wait. I'm gonna go wait for the police to show up and come. Do you see the officer? And I mean, kind of scared me a little bit when you said you wanted to shoot me, though. That makes me kind of nervous, Patty. Okay, I'm leaving the, turn the, the gun. Turn the porch light on. Can you okay. turn, the por turn the porch light on? I'm sorry, what was that? Can you turn the porch light on? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to let my grandparents out of the bathroom. I had uh, the door. Just yeah. leave the, just leave your, grand just leave your grandparents okay. in there right now. I need you to go and turn on the front porch light and walk out the door, but nothing in your hand. Okay, are you outside yet? Uh, yes, I'm going outside right now. Okay, you're walking out the door. Is the light on? <laughs> on the evening of November 21st, the Ely household in Hendersonville should have been a picture of family togetherness. Instead, it became the site of an unspeakable act of violence that has left the community reeling in shock and disbelief. 27-year-old Garrett Robert Ely reportedly confessed to shooting and killing his father, 60-year-old Stephen Robert Ely, and his uncle, 57-year-old Brian Eugene Ely, inside their shared home on Beaumont Drive. The tragic events unfolded shortly after 9.30 p.m., when Garrett placed a chilling 911 call calmly reporting that two men were deceased in the house. Initially hesitant to admit his involvement, Garrett eventually confessed to the dispatcher that he had shot both victims using a high-powered rifle at close range. According to Sheriff Lowell Griffin, Garrett appeared eerily and completely calm during the call, even admitting to sequestering his grandparents in the bathroom using a chair to prevent harming them. The motive behind this senseless act remains shrouded in mystery. Garrett vaguely mentioned a long story of death threats back and forth between the family members over the years, culminating in that fateful night's violence. However, Sheriff Griffin stated he was unaware of any prior domestic disturbance calls from the residents. As investigators worked to piece together the grim timeline, harrowing details emerged. Garrett revealed to the dispatcher that he had shot his father in the garage, covering his body with a sheet while his uncle lay deceased in his bedroom. He estimated the shootings had occurred a couple of hours before he finally summoned authorities. In the wake of this tragedy, the community is left grappling with a multitude of questions. 
How could a family gathering devolve into such brutal violence? What drove a son to allegedly commit such a heinous act against his own flesh and blood? The North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation has joined the case, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of answers and justice for the victims and their loved ones. Sheriff Griffin emphasized the importance of seeking help before resorting to violence, urging residents to reach out for counseling and resources in times of crisis. A devastating event at a local deli leads to the loss of a community pillar. 911, where is your emergency? You know who did it or no? No! I don't got concussion blood! No! I am calling 911 right now! Did you get a description of the person who did it or no? Yes, the black guy. He's covered his neck. He's stabbed in the neck bed, man. I need an ambulance. No, I already got him dispatched out. I'm saying, did you see the person that did it? Yes or no? Stay with me, Joe. Stay with me. Sir. Stay with me. What? I'm holding his neck, dude. Joe, are you with me? Joe, are you with me? Sir. Joe, are you with me? Can you get... Can anyone get a clean towel or cloth to apply pressure where he's bleeding from? I'm on his neck. Is the person who stabbed him there? Yes or no? No, he's gone. He ran. Did you get a description of him or no? Uh, Yeah, he's a black guy wearing a black coat, riding an orange bicycle. He's stabbed in the neck. Here, take my phone, call 911. You talk to 911. Come here. My phone, take my neck. Sir, there are helps on the way out there, okay? Just apply pressure, okay? Just right keep applying pressure. They're on, they're on, they're on there. Hello, hello. 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 Tell him to keep applying pressure. Keep applying pressure. Keep applying pressure. Okay, is he in a house or are you outside of a house? Say again? Are you inside or outside? We're outside on the corner of Heather and Cuthbert. That's yep, from the that's Rock Valley. Come on. Okay, just tell him to keep applying pressure, okay? If it becomes soaked in blood, add more to what's already there. What is your name, sir? Do you know the person or not? No, I don't. We just pulled over. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, is he, is he blinking? That guy's wearing a orange bike and wearing a hoodie. He's shorter than you. Uh, I hear them there. Are they there? Yeah, yeah, they're pulling up now. No, no, no. Okay, they're here. All right, thank you. Let them take over, okay? On the early evening of January 3rd, 2020, a routine day at the Shamrock Deli in Audubon, New Jersey, took a fatal turn. Daheem Williams, an 18-year-old who had visited the deli multiple times seeking employment, made a decision that would have dire consequences. Williams entered the deli and swiftly took the tip jar from the counter before fleeing the scene on an orange bicycle. Jerry Pastore, 57, the owner of the deli and a respected member of the community, instinctively followed in pursuit to retrieve the stolen property. Minutes after the theft, distressing calls were made to 911 with initial callers mistakenly reporting that Mr. Pastor had been involved in a traffic incident. Upon arrival, emergency responders rushed him to Cooper University Hospital, where he was later pronounced dead due to multiple injuries. Back at the deli, the community was in shock. Mr. Pastor, a dedicated family man and father of five, had been known for his generosity and commitment to his staff and neighborhood. Described by his wife as a loving partner, He had spent over four decades in the restaurant industry, building a life revolving around service and culinary excellence. In the wake of the tragedy, the deli's staff and community members came together to honor Mr. Pastor's legacy. A vigil filled with friends, family, and local residents illuminated the night, celebrating his life and contributions. His twin daughter, Rachel Guerrero, spoke about her father's protective nature, emphasizing how he valued his employees and cherished his role as a family man. Two days following the incident, Williams was arrested and faced charges related to the altercation and other offenses. 
Investigators linked him to the scene through fingerprints found on the tip jar and job applications left at the deli. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the community awaited justice, hoping for closure in this tragic case. This story is a stark reminder of how quickly situations can escalate and the profound impact they can have on a community. As this case continues to unfold, it serves as a moment of reflection on the values of compassion and understanding in times of crisis.